In our last couple of lessons, we've learned how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. And now we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations by taking the square root. So this is a different method. We're going to learn four methods total. Um, this is just a second method that we are learning. So there are three steps that we are going to take every time we solve a quadratic by taking the square root. Step one is to isolate the squared expression. That means get the squared term by itself. So the term that has the exponent of two, get that 100% by itself. Step two is to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And step three is to simplify if possible. We learned how to simplify radicals by using the birthday cake method. You could also use factor trees or whichever other method you know to simplify a square root. So let's look at example one. It says solve each quadratic equation. Here, step one is to isolate the squared expression. My squared expression is x squared. It's already by itself. So we're on to step two. Take the square root of both sides. What you do to one side, you must also do to the other. So here, if I take the square root of x squared, I also have to take the square root of 49. The square root undoes the square, just like how addition undoes subtraction or how division undoes multiplication. So when I take the square root of x squared, that just leaves me with x. What is the square root of 49? The square root of 49 is 7, but there's another number, negative 7. So our answer is plus or minus 7. So this symbol right here means plus or minus, and that's how you say it. So we have both positive 7 as an answer. So this is really two solutions, positive 7 and negative 7. You can write your answer either way. If you write it this way, you need to know that this means two solutions, positive 7 and negative 7. If you just write 7, you're missing a whole other solution. So you will lose points on a test or a quiz or anything like that. It has to be both the positive and the negative. The reason why it's plus or minus seven is because positive seven squared is 49, but also negative seven squared is also 49 because a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's why it's always plus or minus. Go ahead and pause this video and see what you can do on example two. The square term is isolated. So step two is to take the square root of both sides. To undo the square, we take the square root. And so we get X equals, whenever we take the square root of a number, it's always plus or minus. Now in this example, 49 was a perfect square. The square root of 49 is seven. On this example, 52 is not a perfect square. So this is when we would have to simplify this using the birthday cake method or whichever method you prefer for simplifying radicals. So remember, to do birthday cake, we're really doing prime factorization. My prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. So out of our prime numbers, what is the smallest prime number that goes into 52? Two, it goes in 26 times. The smallest prime number that goes into 26 is two, it goes in 13 times. The smallest prime number that goes into 13 is 13, it goes in once. When you get to one, you're done. That is a candle to your cake. Because it is a square root, we are looking for pairs of numbers to be able to leave the square root symbol. So here I have a pair of twos that can leave the square root symbol. 13 does not have a pair, so 13 is gonna stay inside. So my answer is plus or minus two square roots of 13. 
Remember that this means that I have two solutions, positive two square roots of 13 and negative two square roots of 13. Let's look at example three. I want to get x squared alone. x squared is being multiplied by negative five. I have to get x squared by itself. So to undo multiplication, I am going to do division. Negative five divided by negative five is one. So that leaves me with one x squared. Negative 50 divided by negative five is positive 10. Now that my square term is by itself, I can undo the square by taking the square root. The square root undoes a square and that leaves me with x. Whenever you take the square root of a number, it's always plus or minus. 10 is not a perfect square, so let's try to simplify that using the birthday cake method. The smallest prime number that goes into 10 is two, it goes in five times. The smallest prime number that goes into five is five, it goes in once. When you get to one, you're done. That is a candle to your cake. Do we have any pairs here? No. So because I don't have any pairs, the square root of 10 is simplified. So this is my answer. Remember, I do have two solutions here, positive square root of 10 and negative square root of 10. Go ahead and try example four. I want to get x squared alone. Right now, we're subtracting 9 from x squared. How do I undo subtraction? Addition. So I am going to go ahead and add 9 to both sides. So I'm going to have x squared is equal to 9. Now that x squared is by itself, I can undo the square by taking the square root. When I take the square root of x squared, I'm left with x. Whenever I take the square root of a number, it's always plus or minus. What's the square root of nine? Three. So my answer is x equals plus or minus three. This is two solutions, positive three and negative three. On example five, I wanna get nine x squared alone. To undo addition, I am going to do subtraction. And so I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides. 10 divided by 10 is 0. I'm going to bring down my 9x squared. 11 minus 10 is 1. I still want to get x squared alone. To undo multiplication, I'm going to do division. And so I'll have x squared is equal to 1 ninth. Now that my x squared term is by itself, I can undo the square by taking the square root. The square root undoes the square and that leaves me with x. Whenever I take the square root of a number, it's always plus or minus. Now don't freak out because you have a fraction here. We can break this up into the square root of one over the square root of nine. The square root of one is one and the square root of nine is three. So my answer is plus or minus one third. On example six, I want to get 10x squared alone. To undo addition, I'll do subtraction. And I'll have 10x squared is equal to 180. To undo multiplication, I'll do division and get x squared is equal to 18. To undo the square, I'll take the square root and get x squared equals plus or minus. Well, 18 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to have to do birthday cake. The smallest prime number that goes into 18 is 2. It goes in 9 times. The smallest prime number that goes into 9 is 3. It goes in 3 times. The smallest prime number that goes into 3 is 3. It goes in 1 time. When you get to 1, you're done. That is the candle to your cake. Here I have a pair of threes that can leave my square root symbol. Two does not have a pair, so two will stay inside. So my answer is plus or minus three square roots of two. Remember that this means that I have two solutions here, positive three square root of two and negative three square root of two.